Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, we will start with a new lecture, lecture number 4 which will be defining stress and strain okay, and which we will which you use in uh, metallurgical parlance and uh, the definition to start a stress or a strain let us uh, first I will uh, start with a simple geometry here okay. So, suppose you have a bar here okay which I have fixed at one end uh, at this point okay. And now I am applying a uh, load or force here, okay, in a, a uniaxial direction, okay. And let's say that the length of this initial bar is L naught, okay. And the cross-sectional area of this uh, bar, if I want to take a cross-sectional area, okay, then let's say it is A naught, okay. So, if I have these parameters, I can define uh, a generalized stress or an average stress uh, uh, acting on this bar. Okay. So, that will be defined as sigma P upon A naught. So, that is basically the applied load divided by cross sectional area. So, this is what we usually know about stress so nothing new here okay uh, what will be the new is uh, later on you will see that i am also refining the definition of this particular stress so if i want to do that let's say i don't want to put this a naught here right now okay i will bring it later on okay so simply it is uh, cross section uh, load divided by cross sectional area okay and uh, if I want to give a more exact definition of a stress, I would say you go to a uh, book of mechanics, uh, there they define a stress at a point okay, and then they also define the stress in the stress uh, tensor terms and then you can use this tensor to do stress transformation and so on. Okay. But it is a different way of treating the stress. We generally treat stress uh, as an average stress, so this is an average stress. Okay. Similarly, when I am uh, uh, putting a load on a, uh, on any material on a block for example here, okay, a cylindrical block, then it will also deform. Okay. In general term we call it a deform, okay. in engineering terms I will be calling it as a strain okay, that I am putting a strain on the material. So, what will happen after the loading? So, suppose this is my initial bar. Okay, maybe it will get stretched under the applied load. Okay. Now, I can see that my initial length which was L naught has now become some another length L. Okay. So, it is from here okay. and initial cross sectional area A naught has become some new cross sectional area A. Okay. So, if I want to define a strain now which I will put like this. So, this is my stress and this is my strain. Okay. Then it will be simply the change in length. Okay. So, basically L minus L naught divided by initial length. So, this is uh, I would be calling as change in length divided by original length. Okay. Or I will be uh, L minus L naught can also be written as delta L upon L naught. Okay. Now, uh, some refinement will come here okay, that I will be calling these stress and strain in two different ways. Okay. One I will be calling it as engineering stress and strain and another I will be calling as true stress and true strain. Okay. I will explain that why you need these two definitions. 
Okay, so let us start with the engineering stress first. So, engineering stress okay. again my same figure. So, your cross sectional area is A naught length is L naught and we are applying a force here P. Okay. So, if it is an engineering stress that means, I am dividing the uh, load by the original cross sectional area. Okay. So, if it is engineering stress, so let us now I will put a subscript here E. Okay. So, P upon A naught that is the original cross sectional area. Okay. So, that is my load or force divided by original cross sectional area. Okay. And the units will be of course, load will be in Newtons and area will be in meter square. So, it will be the units or simply I can also call it as Pascal. Okay. So, these will be the units. Similarly, I can define the engineering strain. Okay. So, this is my engineering strain now as uh, change in length upon original length. Okay, so, that is again delta L upon L naught. So, it is what we generally have as definition. Okay. Now, the uh, one aspect you might uh, start thinking about is that when you are deforming a material. Okay. So, let us say I take a bigger diagram here. Okay. So, I am deforming the material at one instance suppose this is what will be the length and the cross sectional area. Okay. So, at T naught this is the condition, this is the condition at let us say T 1. After another time or duration let us say now this is the condition. So, my cross sectional area is changed and my length is changed. Okay. So, if you see in, in terms of the instantaneous uh, uh, values of stress and strain okay, that are continuously changing. Okay. So, uh, if I say that the stress on the material at instance 2 okay, is same load P divided by the original cross sectional area A naught then I am not uh, truthful as you can say because my cross sectional area has not remained A naught now. In fact, it has become this small area A. So, the stress on the material has changed during the deformation process. Okay. Similarly, if I talk in terms of strain, okay, initially I said okay, this much was my delta L divided by L naught. Okay. But after this, okay, for the next instance that is which is T 2 coming here, whether I would take the new delta L here okay, and divide it by uh, or uh, let us say I will be taking let us say delta L from here and dividing by L naught. Okay. So, I am continuously dividing it by the original length okay, for every change in the length. Okay. So, again I am not being truthful here because if I take instance 2 here that means, for that the original length should have been the L 0 plus delta L okay, and then you should have calculated the next uh, increment or next strain. So, strain as well as stress are continuously changing during the deformation. So, to being more truthful to the situation, okay, we will define a new stress and strain term which now you will see that we normally do not do define in these terms is what we will call as true stress and true strain. Okay. That means, we are being truthful to the situation now. Okay. So, true stress means now I will define this as sigma t here. Okay. So, my load is whatever uh, I am measuring in my load cell. Okay. And the cross sectional area instead of A naught now it will become A that is the instantaneous area. So, whatever is the area at that moment that will be the stress on the material. Okay. So, this A is now 
instantaneous area okay and load is whatever is measuring you are measuring in the load cell okay so now uh, if i want to define this sigma term t, t term in more detail okay let's say uh, or if i want to have now an expression between the sigma t and sigma e okay so uh, let's do some uh, jugglery here okay so sigma e was p upon a not okay so i can do some uh, changes here so let's say this is sigma t p upon a and i am dividing and multiplying by a not here okay so this will become p upon a not into a not by a okay now a not by a uh, i have not defined it till now okay but uh, before coming to that okay let's also define the true strain here okay true strain so my true strain is epsilon okay so engineering strain i have written as e so i will be writing, writing uh, uh, true strain as epsilon okay and that is the continuous change in the length okay so basically if i want to write in summation form it will be like this new length from the original length divided by l0 plus l2 minus l1 upon l1 plus l3 minus l2 upon l2 and so on so every time i am taking a new length okay or instead of writing in summation form let's say i write it in a integral form okay that is 1 by l okay dl okay and starting from l0 to some final length lf okay this is what will be the definition and if i want to write the same definition for uh, engineering strain engineering strain should be uh, something like this it will be 1 upon l0 l0 lf dl okay so you can see the basic difference between engineering strain and true strain is that here we are keeping because l is continuously changing we are keeping it in the integral whereas in this case l0 is a constant which has come out of the integral okay and only you are integrating the change in the length okay so it is again basically the summation in summation form if i want to see this it should be like this l1 minus l0 upon l0 plus l2 minus l1 upon l0 plus l3 minus l2 upon l0 so every time i am dividing by the same original cross section uh, original length okay that is why it is l0 will come out and the rest will become the whatever is the increment that will be uh, summed up okay so this is the difference between the uh, engineering strain and uh, the true strain okay now uh, i can also similar to finding out the relationship between the true stress and true strain i have not completed that part because i wanted to do this first okay i can now relate the engineering strain and uh, uh, engineering uh, and true strain okay engineering strain and true strain okay so uh, if i do uh, 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 a complete integration of this okay i can write it like this 1 by l dl will become with the limits l not lf okay now this can be written as ln of lf minus ln of l not okay and that will be equal to ln of ln of lf upon l not okay so this is my definition now so and uh, for engineering strain it is simply lf minus l not divided by l not okay now if i do again some rearrangement here i can write it like this e equal to lf upon l not minus 1 okay 
and that will make L f upon L naught will be equal to E plus 1. Okay. So, you can see that we have defined a term here and now this will go there. So, so this particular expression is can be inserted here. So, now epsilon will become ln of E plus 1. So, now this is my relationship between epsilon and that means true strain and engineering strain. Okay. So, this is the relationship between the two. Now, I will come back to our problem here okay, that we have got about that this true stress is P upon A naught into A naught by A. So, I want to now relate this with the uh, uh, stress here okay, and that is let us say now I will also call it as. Okay. So, uh, when we are doing any plastic deformation, one thing you should always remember that my volume remains constant. Okay. Volume is not going to change when you are doing a plastic deformation. Okay. So, this constancy volume will always be taken uh, or considered uh, during the plastic deformation. So, that means that if I want to find out volume that will be a cross sectional area for cylindrical sample of course, into uh, length that should be equal to whatever is the uh, area or length during the deformation. So, ev at every point and then should be equal to finally, whatever final values you have got all this should be equal. Okay. So, if I want to write uh, L upon L naught that will be equal to A upon A naught. Okay. So, that ratio will be there. So, we have A by A naught here that can be replaced by then L by L naught. So, this will become L upon L naught. Okay. L upon L naught is equal to E plus 1. So, we will have sigma and P upon A naught is our engineering stress. Okay. This one. Okay. So, this becomes sigma E and L upon L naught becomes E plus 1. So, it becomes E plus 1. Okay. So, sigma or true stress is equal to engineering stress into engineering strain plus 1. So, this is the two these are the two relationships between true stress and true strain uh, sorry true stress and engineering stress true strain and engineering strain very important relationships. So, what you will do actually when you do any tensile test uh, uniaxial tensile test in a tensile testing machine. Okay. So, the initial graph if you want to plot it will be extension okay, and here it will be force. So, only you are measuring force actually your load cell does not measure the stress. And one more thing you should be very careful to understand or you should understand is that when you are doing a tensile test you are not applying load on the sample you are only stretching it you are applying a strain on the material. Okay. So, when you are holding the sample what you are doing is your cross head is moving. Okay. When the cross head is moving what you are measuring as force is uh, uh, which, which is you are measuring uh, on the load cell of the machine is the response of the material to that strain. Okay. That is why strain is on the x axis and stress it on, on the y axis. Okay. So, what you are doing is you are stretching the material and noting down the response of the material. So, response of the material is in terms of the basic uh, uh, data which you get is in terms of force and you are extending the material. So, that is on the x axis. Okay. So, extension versus force data you will get. Okay. From this data you will calculate the, so extension means basically delta L. So, if I divide by L naught okay, then it will be the engineering strain and if I divide force P by A naught then I will get the engineering stress. So, this data will be next plotted by, uh, uh, by doing this. So, this you can do easily in any 
uh, software which handles data for example excel microsoft excel you can easily do this kind of calculation then from here by knowing the relationship between the engineering stress and the engineering strain i can find out what will be the true strain and true stress okay very simple so you have this calculation we have already have relationship now between the true stress and true uh, stress uh, engineering stress and engineering strain similarly between the true strain and engineering strain so we have relationship you can easily find out the data okay now the interesting thing is that how this uh, graphs will look okay when when you are uh, plotting it for example i am not going into force extension it will be same as what you will get in engineering stress uh, strain curve okay so the curve will look something like this sorry okay this is a, um, a normal curve which you will see one more type of curve which you will see i will just show you in the because this is where lot of uh, mistakes i usually people do okay so one type of curve is like this what you i am plotting another one is this one and then you have something like this and then it goes like this okay so this is what you see in a plane carbon steel okay so again this is my engineering strain and engineering stress okay so only difference here is this part and this is what we call as yield point phenomena okay so this happens only in few material so whenever somebody ask you to plot a stress strain curve it is not necessary that you will always plot it like this you can plot this is also a general uh, stress strain curve okay so difference is that this in some material you will observe this kind of yield point phenomena not in all materials okay so i will for i will be using only this stress strain curve uh, most of the time okay so if you see you have i am not going into all the details of the stress strain curve here okay you might be knowing that but just to refresh your memory this is your elastic part okay where the material follows hooke's law and hooke's law means my sigma e will be proportional to strain okay and e is my modulus of elasticity or young's modulus okay so it is young's modulus okay then somewhere it will yield okay that also you can find out by taking an offset of 0.2% strain okay and make a line parallel to the this linear part of the curve okay so you will get somewhere as yield point or yield strength okay then you see that actually the there is a increase in the stress as you are deforming okay as you are putting a strain there is a increase in stress this part is called okay up to this point okay where you again it starts dropping so this part is called work hardening okay there the or strain hardening that you are putting strain and it is getting hardened okay and this happens because of the increase in dislocation density in the material so dislocation start interacting with other barriers for example grain boundary precipitate with themselves uh, among themselves also so all this interaction actually increase the strength of the material okay so the stress for deformation keeps increasing as you are putting a strain in the material okay so this is what we call as work hardening and this is where you get the uh, what we call as uniform elongation okay this is where you get the uniform elongation okay and then at some point the stress start dropping okay that is where the actually the necking starts okay and then the drop in the stress start to happening to happen okay now if i want to plot the same curve in a in a true stress true strain curve uh, or plot okay then 
initial part will look similar to the one here okay, up to the more or less yield point okay. and then let us say first I plot the engineering stress strain okay, and then I start plotting the true stress true strain curve. So, you can see that engineering stress strain curve is coming down after the necking okay, whereas true stress strain curve is not coming down. Okay. Why? Because we are taking the instantaneous area of the sample. So, stress has to increase the value of stress has to increase because in the previous case we were taking only the original cross sectional area though the cross sectional area is continuously decreasing. So, now because we are calculating stress by taking instantaneous area my true stress value will be more. Okay. Whereas, uh, the engineering strain uh, or basically true strain values will be lower than the engineering strain. Why? Because in engineering strain we are dividing the change in length by the original length which is a smaller length and as you deform the length will increase okay. and in case of true strain we are dividing by the instantaneous length which is more. Okay. So, something is more in the denominator means the value has to be less. Okay. So, this is how the normal relationships will be there okay. and uh, this is where actually the sample fractures. So, in true stress strain term this is where the sample will fracture. So, these are the uh, different stress strain curves okay, for the two cases here. Okay. Now, if I want to have a more understanding of the work hardening okay, for the elastic part we have this relationship okay, for where the work hardening is there or where the uniform elongation is there. Okay. We can see that it is a non-linear type of curve here. This is a linear equation, but this curve is a non-linear one and a, 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 a relationship can be now uh, established between this two one and more most acceptable uh, relationship between the true stress and true strain in the deformation part plastic deformation part is basically a relationship like this epsilon to the power n. Okay. So, you can see that it is a non-linear equation now it is in some kind of exponential curve okay, because it looks like an exponential curve. So, that kind of equation is there okay. and if I take logarithmic on both the side okay, then I can plus n ln epsilon is not it if I take log in the on both the side now it becomes a linear equation okay. and if it becomes linear equation and if I plot ln of sigma versus ln of epsilon okay, I will get at different uh, levels you have measured all these values okay, and plotted these. So, you will get some point something like this. So, if I fit a a, a linear line a straight line on this okay then the slope will be equal to the n okay so i can find out that what are the material parameters during the strain hardening of the material now i would like to tell you the advantage of uh, uh, measuring or uh, performing or your calculation using true stress or true strain okay let's uh, uh, give an example here again I am starting with some I am just plotting on a linear scale. Okay. So, this is let us say my original length of the material okay. and uh, let us call it as uh, L, uh, L1. Okay. Now, I am giving increment in different stages here. Okay. So, let us call them as L2, L3 and so on. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, different length will be called as one L 1, L 2, L 3, L 4 and so on. Okay. So, if I, I am calc doing calculation using the engineering strain okay, and this kind of a situation can come very easily during any uh, operation. Okay. For example, when you are doing a deformation in industry 
okay, you start with a big ingot, okay, then you do first pass of rolling, second pass of rolling, maybe heating in between third pass of rolling. Okay. Now, you want to know that what is the maximum deformation you have given, total deformation not maximum, total deformation you have given uh, to the material during all these stages. So, some deformation or some strain you have imparted at uh, first rolling, then it goes the material goes to the second rolling mill you have imparted some strain at that point and then you have imparted some strain in the third rolling stage. So, now you want to know that from uh, ingot to the maybe the final finishing what is the total strain you have imposed in the material. Okay. So, this is what is the similar case here I have started with a sample which is having a length L 1 okay. and now I am deforming the material in different stages. Okay. So, if I now I will see the advantage of doing the strain calculation using the engineering strain idea and true strain idea and want to see that what is the uh, advantage of using one over another. Okay. So, uh, let us start with first. So, I will call it as E 1 2 that means, the strain imparted the material from going from one length 1 to the length 2 that will be equal to basically L 2 minus L 1 upon L 1 that is now I will call delta L 1 2 upon L 1. Similarly, I can say what is E 2 3. So, I am directly writing in terms of delta L now. Uh, the length has become 2. So, L 2 okay. then E 3 okay. so like that and now I would like to compare uh, if I have gone from directly from 1 to 3. Okay. So, the idea is that if I have done something in stages, okay, so length is same I have gone from L 1 to L 3. In one case I have gone directly from L 1 to L 3, in another case I am go going from L 1 to L 2 first and then L 2 to L 3. So, the paths are different. So, we want to see whether it is a path dependent or not. Okay. So, if I directly go from 1 to 3, then I will be calling this delta L 1 3 divided by L 1. Now, I will be taking L 1. Okay. So, now I want to see whether these two are equal. So, let us see if E 1 2 plus E 2 3 look similar to that. So, this is delta L 1 2 upon L 1 plus delta L 2 3 upon L 2. Okay. If you also want to simplify this in terms of L 2 minus L 1 and so on, let us say we do that also. So, I will be if I divide it, uh, let us see if it still looks same plus 1 minus L 3 upon L 2, whereas this is L 3 minus L 1 upon L 1. Okay. So, uh, it, it is very clear to me okay, that this expression does not look similar to this expression. So, when I, you are doing engineering uh, strain calculation for this kind of incremental strain, okay, then it is a part dependent kind of calculation. Okay. The, it will not say that in these two cases where you are going from 1 to 3 directly or you are going from 1 in stages 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 both calculations are not same. Okay. Let us do the same calculation using the true strain uh, idea. So, if I will be writing again ln L 2 by L 1 okay. that is epsilon 1 2. Similarly, epsilon 2 3 will be equal to ln of L 3 upon L 2. Okay. And if I want to go directly from 1 to 3, then it will be epsilon 1 3 ln of L 3 upon L 1. Now, let us see whether these two expressions look similar. So, uh, if I now add F, uh, epsilon 1 2 and 2 3. So, epsilon 1 2 plus epsilon 2 3. So, it is ln of L 2 by L 1 plus ln of 
L 3 by L 2, then it becomes ln of L 2 minus ln of L 1 plus ln of L 3. I am just expanding this using logarithmic uh, relationships. So, you can see that this and this will cancel out. Okay. This is negative. So, uh, when I am writing in ratio terms, it will go in the denominator. So, it becomes L 3 upon L 1. Okay. So, now you can see that this addition looks similar to this. Now, this is a very important uh, concept for a metallurgical engineer because he does all this deformation in stages. Okay. So, if he does calculation using engineering strain, okay, he will get every time he will get a different uh, strain values. Okay. Or uh, if he misses any particular stage, then the values will be uh, continuously uh, will be different from each other. Whereas, if he does the calculation using true strain, okay, if he find out the strain in each stage and do the calculation or if he finds out the strain from only the initial stage and the final stage, both the strain values will be same. Okay. So, for a metallurgical engineer, he will always use true strain concept to do calculation, whereas a mechanical engineer can use an engineering strain or engineering stress uh, concepts because they are only dealing with the elastic part of the deformation. They are not concerned with the plastic deformation that is only a, uh, in the purview of a metallurgical engineer because they want to do deformation. Okay. So, I think hope that with this lecture the ideas of uh, stress strain engineering stress engineering strain true stress true strain will be clear to you and the relationship between each one of them and why we want to do the calculation using true strain concepts. Thank you.